So you're watching this video because you've got a rough idle on your car or you just want to know how to diagnose a rough idle problem so you can impress your mates when they have a problem with this common issue on car engines. So in this video, we're just going to look at the common causes of the rough idle and give you some steps to go through in diagnosing what could be causing that rough idle. So the engine burns fuel. There's pistons inside the engine compressing the air and the fuel, then the fuel is ignited. So you might have a spark plug initiating that. You might have a diesel engine. There's lots of similarities between diesel and gasoline or petrol powered engines. So diagnosing the problem with a misfire is fairly similar between the two. So there's potentially a few different causes of the problem, but it's generally down to a misfire. So if the air and fuel mix or the spark is not happening correctly, you will get a misfire and that may typically be just on one or two cylinders. So that can cause the vibration to happen. So addressing the problems and the steps you need to go through in order to diagnose them is quite important. But the first thing to check really is just the engine mount. So the engine, if it was bolted directly onto the car chassis, would cause a lot of vibration. You would really notice that and it would be extremely uncomfortable to drive. So what they do, they mount the engine on these rubber bushings. So the rubber effectively absorbs a lot of the vibration between the engine and the chassis points that it's actually mounted to. If those rubber bushings have started to wear, you will get excessive vibration and play in the engine. So if you just grab your engine block and rock it backwards and forwards, there should be very little movement in it. Also try it side to side. Engines typically have much more than one mount. Some engines have four or five mounts. Most engines just have a few mounts at various points around the engine just to securely fix it into the engine bay and ensure that this vibration doesn't happen. So if you find that one of those rubber mounts is started to wear, it's typically going to spread to the other rubber mounts because the wear and tear created through the deterioration of the one will cause excessive wear and deterioration on the other ones. So it really is something you need to jump on and fix. And don't ever just replace a one engine mount, replace them all at the same time because chances are you will need to do that anyway. And while the car is off the road, you may as well just get them all fixed at the same time. So we're talking about misfires and rough running. So an engine needs air, it needs fuel, and the petrol or gasoline engines also need a spark. So if the timing or delivery of that is wrong, you will get rough running problems. So the mixture that you have of air and fuel is very, very precisely measured out. You've got a little bit more leeway with diesel engines. They seem to operate in much wider variances compared to the gasoline or the petrol engines. So if that metering is off, if the airflow sensor has become soiled, if it's not measuring the air that's going into the engine correctly, or if the fuel injectors have started to degrade or become gummed up, they're not going to spray the fuel in the correct pattern and that is going to create burning issues and that can affect just the one cylinder which really exacerbates the problem of the vibration and you really do notice that rough idle. If everything seems okay fuel wise and air wise you should really be looking at the spark the ignition system. So removing the spark plugs you'll generally see if there's a problem there so they may have become very oiled and fouled up over time they might have carbon building up the electrodes may have become damaged they may have been worn the gap may not be correct so check the gap it's not usually necessary on modern spark plugs and modern engines but it is a possibility that the gap on the spark plug is now too wide and you're just not getting that effective spark plug. So you're really looking to just make sure that there's a balance across all of the cylinders you've got. You will generally notice abnormalities with the smart plug. One of the best ways of diagnosing any issue with the engine is to get an onboard diagnostic tool, an OBD2 reader, plug that in and just download any error codes. So if you've got a check light coming up on the dashboard, that is typically a signal that you should get those error codes downloaded and read off and that there's something there that can help you to diagnose it. So that really should be the first port of call that you go to because that can help you to determine where the problem is. Some engines may even tell you which cylinder has the problem and what the typical problem is or what the abnormal readings are that it's getting. So the air supply, it could be the air metering, there could be some sort of blockage on the intake, carbon buildup on the intake valves is quite common and that typically happens on just two of the cylinders because they're usually closest to the incoming airstream so as the exhaust gases go back into the intake because you've got these PCVs and EGR systems on modern engines, it will typically clog up two of those valves closest to that intake much more than the other two so that creates an imbalance in the airflow and that can create a bit of a misfire condition. 
So getting the intake cleaned, if you've got a boroscope camera and you can just remove the manifolds and just have a look at the valves themselves and see what's going on, it can go a long way to help you to diagnose the problem. So if you do notice carbon building up on those valves, get that addressed sooner rather than later because that is just going to grow and become a worse problem. You'll notice the rough idle is becoming more and more noticeable and more problematic. And if it wasn't stalling, it may well start to stall. Adding a fuel system cleaner to your tank of fuel is normally a really good way to go because that cleans the injectors. If it's a port injection, it'll also help remove the carbon that's built up on the valves. If it's direct injection, it's not going to do anything to help that whatsoever. But it will just ensure that everything on the intake where the fuel system is, is as clean as possible. And I must note that some people have used cheap, low quality fuels that have created a, a gumming effect or allowed deposits to build up. Most premium fuels that you buy nowadays have got excessive amounts of detergent in and they do a good job of keeping everything inside the engine nice and clean and tidy. So I have heard of people switching to these better quality premium brands of fuel and the engine has been much happier and run much better. Let me know in the comments your experiences of premium fuels. Do you think it's just marketing hype or do you think there is something to it? Have you noticed the difference when you switch to these premium fuels or the more expensive fuels that have got these cleaning additives in them? So one fuel system cleaner that I've used extensively and I do recommend and I've not been paid to recommend is BG range. They do one for diesel engines, one for petrol engines, but that seemed to be more effective than a lot of the other fuel system cleaners that I've used. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been of fuel system cleaners and whether it's cleared up the problem with the misfire that you're having. So other inherent problems you could have is some physical problem with the engine. Maybe the belts that are attached between the crank and the camshaft have started to become worn. There's excessive play and vibration. It may just be causing extra drag on the engine. It may upset the cam timing as well. So there's quite a few complex it is within that. So just checking the belt tension is a good way to go just to make sure that everything is running within tolerances. So I hope this video has gone a long way to help you to get to the bottom of the problems. It usually is fairly simple, but finding which simple problem it is can be quite complex. There are some ECU or engine computer related issues that can cause misfires and a lot of issues crop up when sensors start to fail or start sending bad information to the ECU and it tries to adjust itself to keep everything running smoothly and it gets to a point where it just can't manage the problems and the faults that it's getting within the engine so it may just be time to replace a few of those sensors. So please boot that like button if this video has been useful to you. Let us know in the comments your experiences, what you think of this video, how I can improve it, if you've got some tips yourself to pass on to other motorists watching this channel and please subscribe because we would love you to stay tuned and I've lined this video up for you so you should find that one interesting and thank you so much for watching.